Excuse me. Wow. Woo. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, July 15th. Today's going to go better than Wednesday. I know this to be true. <laughs> Let me get down to the comments and stuff like that. So ridiculous that I couldn't make it work. Okay, there you go, Susan. I see from Maryland. Um, how is everybody today? John and his brother are coming home from a four-day golf guy thing. And so they're somewhere between here and Oakdale, California. We will, you know, light a candle, say a prayer, but already we're in much better shape than we were on Wednesday. That was just horrible. Just horrible. Hey, Margo. So, uh, we, got, uh, we got a lot of quilts to show today. I'm still not through all of them. I can't believe it. But as people are loading on, my daughter and her family are in Hawaii, uh, Maui to be exact, and uh, they were at the bookstore and look what they found. Oh, my first book. <laughs> and my daughter looked at it and she goes, oh my gosh, mom. She said, you were my age when you wrote that book. And then I said, do you even remember taking the author fo photo? And she didn't. It was, I had poodle hair at that point. <laughs> Don't laugh. We all had it. And it was taken next door at Kay's. And then my daughter wanted to know where her money was for photo credits. I didn't even give her credit in the book, so that's kind of naughty. But I said, yeah, well, I can tell you I really got rich on that. <laughs> So glad to be with you guys. Okay. So what else do we have going on here? Oh, oh, you know how much I love my lap app when I'm doing my, um, when I'm doing my embroidery and all that. It just, it kind of just brings everything up into your face and we are out right now, but we're getting more in. Well, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? You're sitting there going, okay, when she wants to play, she's a maniac, um, but when she wants to snuggle, what do I do? What do I do? But then here is, if you have a lap app and you have a kitten, it is now her, uh, her teething, <laughs> her teething, her teething bar. So, um, oh, Rhonda, hi, 3 a.m. in Aust Australians. Oh, Rhonda, go to bed. <laughs> but thank you for being here. Okay, so Lap App now has another um, working way to use it, a cat perch and a teething. Oh, the other thing I was going to show you too is they have come out with um, this add-on down here. And I got it. And when we get the new Lap Apps and we're going to get these, you, you get them separately. And what I did was, um, and this is like, so maybe you can use it for pressing or something. And I thought, I'll never use it. Well, I do. And what I did was rather than permanently attach it, attached it, I used something called alien tape. And I just put it down on each end. So I'm not like glue gunning it down or anything so I can get it off. Oh, also, it's a, it's a, it's a chew toy. Lucky thing I don't really use these. <laughs> so anyways, I thought that was fun. Okay, so I got in the mail yesterday something from Cindy Needham. Yep, a long tube, and I didn't know what it was, and I thought, well, you know, first of all, if it's from Cindy Needham, you know it's going to be really good, period. But then I also know, she's a dear friend of mine, could also be a Burt Reynolds poster in here too. So I, I, I called her up. Or he texted her this morning. I said, can I open it? Can I like un unbox it? And she said, no, you better do it before. Hmm, Burt Reynolds poster. Actually, I have one of those. Um, many of you know. So she said, you might not know what it is. And so I said, okay, I'm going to open it up before. And the thing is, Cindy is always coming up with really great things. And and the card in it, let me, let me stand up and show you. I was going to do a second camera, but I don't think I can. Um, I don't think I would be able to show it as well. So out of the box came this. All right. You know, it's got wonderful linens and all that. And so I open it up. Let me open it up your way. Oh, here's one of her little magnets. And you go like this. 
and it's on a tube and what it's used for is traveling with your wool work. So Cindy's all into wool now too and I suppose you might even put it under the top flap, you know. I'm going to put a little pocket on it in it so I can um, travel with my stuff but basically you go like this Okay, it's really hard to do backwards. And then you roll it up. And then when you go, it's all pristine. It doesn't get all crunchy and weird like how it is when I grab it to go to the cabin. I mean, I could even put a couple projects in here. And then you tie it shut. All right? She made a couple of these and gave them away to her woolly buddies at... Um, her McLeod retreat, and she said she might start selling them, but what she wants you to know and what she would prefer for you to have is to go to her Facebook page, all right? Um, this is what the cover of it looks like. I mean, look at that work. I mean, come on, right? And just scroll down a little bit, and she has instructions on how to do this. So... Um, I'm not going to take you through all the instructions, but if you just go to her webpage, uh, cindyneedham.com, on, on, not her webpage, her Facebook page, the instructions there on how to make it. I, I, I think it's absolutely fabulous, and, and it just makes everything feel a little more special. You know, I tie a little bow around here, and they're just hanging out a little bit. But these, these are her magnets, so you can, like, put your scissors on it. And then on hers, I think on the one of the things on Facebook, she has a little pocket. So in there you could put like some needles and maybe your needle threader and your little scissors and you're good to go. So, so Hillary, you saw this the other day. I, ha I think it's brilliant. Just absolutely brilliant. And I, I think the other thing that is really super fun too is that, I mean, I am hooked on her linen process. And I took it to my mini group yesterday and everybody's mouth about fell on the floor. Uh, I will show you soon when it's done. Got a little more machine quilting to do. And, and, and now, I mean, I'm all loving wool and now she's shifting over to some wool. I don't know, it's just, it's wonderful. The universe of quilting and creativity is um, infinity. It just, it goes on forever and ever and ever if we just expose ourselves to new ideas, etc. And that's exactly what you're doing by being here today. So I hope you all got to see uh, last Wednesday's, I mean, it was, you know, 15 minutes late and you could see what Katie did. And on Monday, I got to find my list here of exactly what we're doing. We're going to move on with her class. Uh, just so much information. It's crazy. Katie Fowler. She's coming back from Ireland tomorrow. That's when she's coming back. What is this? This is ridiculous. There we go. Yeah, we did elements of design. And then uh, on Monday, we'll do principles of design. Okay? Okay. Um, uh, all right. All right. So let's look and see what you people are up to. You never cease to amaze me. It just makes my heart so happy when I see what you send. Now, KC sent me a bunch of stuff. You're up first, KC. And um, this actually, she did it made. But let me pull it over because I want you to see these together. I'll, I'll show you. Okay, there we go. Look at those. Okay, those are quilts by... Tamara Kate, and they were made for her, and they hang above her dresser. And and the one thing I have to tell you, Casey, was that I think you said the moth was in a star shape. I don't see it. I'm I'm feeling kind of star challenged right now. But what I'm not challenged is how wonderful these are, and how lucky that you have a friend that would gift you these beautiful pieces. I mean, they are so lovely. Okay, and then and then KC made this one, and this is for her orange living room. Um, she can't remember the designer's name, but I oh, many things strike me about this piece. But one of the things um, is that 
crazy black and white jacks, for better word, border on the bottom. She could have easily just done the stripe binding all the way around, but adding that at the bottom takes this quilt to a whole nother level. I, I think you would agree with that. Okay, and then we have, oh, this is a real quiet quilt of hers. This is all uh, Tula's fabric. Uh, by with free spirit and she said it almost took her under doing all of the fussy cutting and I see in the black and white like kind of like almost smack in the center but up there's a little a white with a black skunk and all that this is kind of a super I spy piece uh, Tula's fabric is really 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 fun to work with and Tula also has a collection of solids that are new I believe we have them in the store and they're they're just different. They, they have a wonderful sensibility of color to them that's not like other stuff that we enjoy. Now, Casey, I, I lost your watercolor quilt. I, I went to try and find it this morning. Here's the lesson of this. Remember the watercolor quilts where it was like a heart and it was all these different fabrics, florals and stuff like that? Well, she started this like 20 years ago and she just now pulled it out and uh, finished it and she's so glad she did so if there's and, and I mean that was the craze when Simply Quilts was on those watercolor quilts and I can't remember the gals names Donna might be one Pat and Donna it might be and so um, we had a show on that and I'm sorry I lost the image because it's actually a funny story um, after I was pretty comfortable being on air at Simply Quilts the producers would challenge me to get words into the show and have them flow in organically and every time I did. So one was uh, Sea Hag, Sea Hag, yeah, Sea Hag. And somebody was showing all her fabrics and I looked at a green and I go, well, that looks like Sea Hag green to me. <laughs> but for the watercolor show, Dodo Bird is what I had to get in there. And so we're looking at it and there was an upside down bird in one of the squares. And I, I made sure the camera person knew I was going there and I pointed to it and I go, well, is that a dodo bird? <laughs> so don't mess with me on camera. I can do it. I might mess up alive, but I can do it. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, KC, Tula. Okay, now we are with Anne. And Anne sent me three pieces, and um, I said, okay, Anne, we know now you wear glasses. Um, you're a kitty lover on a computer keyboard. <laughs> I just saw that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That's fabulous. <laughs> Chicouterie tray. <laughs> and a glass of wine. Okay, Anne, you, you moved to one side of me, and Noella moved to the other side. <laughs> and then... Anne did this in the Ricky Kaleidoscope class, and it's a little bit blurry, but I sure love seeing these come to fruition, and I'll make sure Ricky sees these too. I like in the corner, in the four corners, how you use the same fabric and you kind of beveled it out type thing. That's really neat. Okay, and then, and then, remember when we did the uh, Christmas holiday quilt? And if you were a Jewish, you could make it like with dreidels and do it a Jewish holiday quilt. And so here, look at this. She made it a garden, a garden quilt. That's just beautiful. I don't quite know where you got the flowers, but that's what I love. When people take an idea and they run with it. it. It makes my heart just super, super happy. Okay, and then here's Rhonda. Um, this is actually Rob Appel's pattern. Uh, he's I, I just love Rob. We've done a show with him. And this is called Gloria's Grapes. She made it for a wine connoisseur friend of hers. And I want to put out there again, we have ton of that fusible bias tape on sale in the store. Tons. We bought it for um, Color My World, and we bought more than what we needed. So if you're going to do a stained glass quilt, please come buy the black bias tape from us. Just pretty, please. Okay. 
All right, then we go to Miss Becky. Okay, the, remember this, the Cave Mystery Quilt? Well, she put it in the Wisconsin State Fair, I believe. I think it was a state fair. I do not think it was a county fair. And it was the first time she's ever entered. And she said that in working on this, she, okay, guess who's here? Come on, go away, cat, go away. Yeah, go away, go, go. Um, she said it's the first time she's ever entered, but what was real, and, oh, and the project with the cave, which is still there. You guys, if you're new here, you can go back and watch it. Um, it really stepped up her piecing abilities. And so that's always a good thing when that happens. I mean, other than Sally Collins, I think we all can use help in that department. But what was really neat was she lingered when the judges were judging and she could pick up, oh, Wisconsin State Fair. Thanks, Becky. Judging in July, fair is early August. Oh, okay, okay. Thanks, Becky. Um, she said it was interesting to sit there while they were judging because as they, I'm going to say, picked a, apart her quilt, um, she was feeling pretty proud of what she pulled off, and I mean that in a lovely way. And they only found, like, one little boo-boo that she could have done differently. And I'm telling you, I've judged once, and I don't ever want to do it again. I mean, I just don't. But I think we can all agree that this deserved a ribbon. Oh, it's just beautiful. All right. Then we have Kathy Kreener. Keener. Keener. Um, these, I want you to check out this, um, designs by Tony Whitney. Tony Whitney. She has, it's, uh, she has a lot, this is fusible, okay, so it's completely doable, but look how beautiful it is, and Kathy actually sent a picture of the main of it, and then here is another one, um, it's a crane, right, Kathy? Yeah, I can't wait to see this thing quilted. So, I went on the website, Tony Whitney, um, oh, by the way, the horse's name is Summer Breeze. Um, you might want to check it out if you are an animal lover. Chances are you're going to find something there that you can make. Okay. Okay, then we have Sharon from British Columbia. Whoops, I don't want to show the back yet. Let's do the front. The back's pretty cool, right? She did this all from her stash, all of it with the exception of the inner border, the, the vine, and the binding. That, my friends, was one of the trickiest things to come up with for the kit, and I love that you use the plaid. I think it's absolutely fabulous. But then look at what Sharon did on the back with more neutrals. Isn't that lovely? I think we did that New York Beauty, didn't we? And I'm not sure if you did it without us or not, but that would be in the paper piecing unit that we did. And I did a show on that too. If you went Alex Anderson paper piecing, that show would come up. Um, it's just beautiful. It's just absolutely beautiful. So thank you for sending that along. All right. Kathy. Okay, Kathy, I'm a little confused, but I hope not. Um, this particular quilt was a remembrance quilt of her mom and sister, and so you know that this quilt is just entrenched with, um, a lot of love. And I know that if you are grieving somebody, or if somebody is ill and you're making them the quilt, just the process of making a quilt puts you in their them them in your heart completely and then Kathy um, here is another one that she did it, get off cat get off hey yeah I, get, I I had to do it I had to do it um, the upper left one is made with um, the Guild, and I'm thinking, we're the Guild. I'm getting it now. Um, that was when we did that um, Sequoia sampler. I get it now. I didn't get it yesterday. Um, and she did this all with scraps from the 80s. So 
right there, I know that Christy Sword has been quilting for quite a while. I also put in this image of the quilt because that corner is so artful and beautiful. And I love the way you see the staircase coming down. And in a sense, the quilts mimic that angle as they follow the stairwell coming down. Um, it's, it's just beautiful. And I'll bet you dollars to donuts, that's the remembrance quilt on the middle on the right. Let me go back and look. Dollars to donuts. Did your family ever say that? Yeah, that's that. Just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So, Kathy, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for reminding us that when, when we are in grief or trying to problem solve something, um, a quilt is a good place to go. And I do hope, um, oh, I do hope, wait, is it Christy or Kathy? It's Christy. I'm sorry, Christy. I do hope, why do I have Kathy written on here? Anyways, that it's all documented on the back because for generations to come, this will have um, fabulous meaning. Okay, it's either Christy Sword or Kathy Sword. I need a producer because I'm not cutting the mustard. Okay, last but not least, Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh no, 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 no. This is, this is, this is, this is just a note I got in my inbox. Um, I just finished watching the summer I turned pretty. It's cute. It, it's, it's cute. Okay. It, it'll make you smile. Um, and at the same time, we just found out Virgin River season four is coming back July 20th. Yes. If you haven't seen that series, do it. Okay, now we're going to get to Miss Robin. Miss Robin. Hey, Robin. I miss you. Okay, so she took a class from David Hastings. Um, this, this show has not yet aired, okay? It has not yet aired. Um, it... This one was taking a painting and turning it into something graphically fabulous. So I, our little mini group is go is hired him to come in, and we were going to do something with architecture. And now I think we might very well switch over to this. Okay, look at this, guys. Oh, it's unbelievable. That is just, just fabulous. Fabulous. And so, Robin, I took it to Guild yesterday and we're sending, not Guild, my mini group, and we're sending it out to see if we want to switch to that. I don't know how he got you there, but he got you there. Okay. Um, I want to do one other thing. It's going to make us run a little bit long. I hope that's okay. Um, at the, at um, the Legion of Honor in San Francisco, um, there is an exhibit with um, Guapai, and there is a video that's on their website that I want to share with you. I think it's about oh, maybe seven minutes. It is, it's worth wrapping it up for this weekend, and um, let's hope I can get it to play. A lot of it is in Chinese, but it's subtitled, and that's okay, but, but wait, wait till you see. Let's see if I can get this to go. Here we go. My wife was in the Qing era. 在我小的时候，他就常常跟我讲那个年代的故事。外婆有一个百宝箱，里面存放着一串她结婚时佩戴的宫花。他会把宫花别在我的头上，让我在镜子面前照照。每天晚上，他都会跟我描述他年轻时穿的衣服，面料是滑滑的，上面绣着花和蝴蝶。我经常闭上眼睛去想象，美美的，像梦一样。八
十年代，我成了全国第一批服装设计的学生。那时候刚刚改革开放，我接触到了很多西方的电影和小说，所以当时的毕业设计，我就去问老师，说我想做一件婚纱。后来我就跑去了人民剧院的后台，跟那些老师傅学。就这样，我做出了人生中的第一条大裙子。看一下这镜头里边的样子，这位置还行啊。走入社会后，我是中国第一批服装设计师。那时我设计的一款衣服，最多能卖到五万件。百货大楼里，所有的人都在抢购那件衣服。但是慢慢的，我变得非常不喜欢自己的那些商品设计。我想要自由，想要设计那些我真正喜欢的衣服。后来我就辞职了，成立了玫瑰坊。因为文革的时候，很多传统的记忆都流失了。我为了找绣工，就跑去河北的农村，挨家挨户的问那些会针线活的妇女：“我想把这些丢失的东西找回来，传承下去。”我其实从来没有刻意想过要把中国传统文化融入进我的设计，因为文化一直是融于我血脉中的东西。这一切都是水到渠成的。我的作品是一个梦，在梦里是外婆讲述的那件我从来没见过，但是是世界上最美的衣服。姥姥，我想穿黄色的衣服。那是皇帝的颜色，我们老百姓不能穿。从小的时候，我就特别喜欢黄色，但因为外婆的影响，黄色在我心里一直是无法触碰到的，至高无上的。所以，即便到现在，我几乎没有穿过黄色的衣服。我的作品，它表达的是一种理想，而理想都是高高在上的，超越现实的。所以，在我很多作品中，都选择了我最渴望、最高不可攀的东西，那就是黄色。This is the year 2015 at the Met Gala. Guope has become internationally recognized and certainly became well known in the West. So throughout her career, Guo Pei first represented the evolution of Chinese fashion, but today I believe that she represents a global fashion narrative. I can say it is born with China. These 40 years, China's rapid development and Chinese beauty's change gave me the opportunity to create my work and show the stage. 西方文化曾深远地影响了东方文化，而如今的东方文化，尤其是中国文化，又反过来影响了西方，乃至全世界。而我会继续传承这个文化，继续做着那个外婆跟小女孩讲述的美丽的梦。
It almost made me cry watching it again. I mean, and that little girl in the yellow dress, I missed that the first time around. Oh, okay, I gotta get over there. Uh, Wendy went and she's actually going back um, to see it again. I think it's through kind of the early September. That just takes my breath away, just takes my breath away. Whew. Okay, and, and just look at this beautiful, like you're just saying, um, Rhonda, your friend saw it. Yeah, no, it's fab. I think you do have to get tickets in advance, okay? So I just, somebody was asking, what quilt shops would you go to in San Jose? I'd forget that, and I'd get my rear up to the Palace of Legion of Honor, um, the Palace of Legion of Honor, and go see this. That's what I would do. Um, I don't know, really, the quilt shops in San Jose because I'm a East Bay girl, and I always go to Wooden Gate and Cotton Patch. Um, and they're not that far from you, but in San Jose, I'm really not that familiar with the quilt store, stores are down there. Somehow going over that hill just unglues me. Oh, I just loved it. Okay, sit on that this weekend. <laughs> sit on that, okay? Um, tomorrow, if I recall, Dee is going to do a piece on getting a seam alignment without pinning. Yep. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. So I think today makes up for Wednesday. <laughs> I just think it does, okay? If I were a betting woman, I don't know. Maybe I didn't have my angel light on. <laughs> Maybe that's what the problem was. <laughs> so have a wonderful weekend. Um, I'm going to jam out to work for a few minutes and figure some stuff out. Um, okay, Rondi in San Jose. It is Golden State Quilts and the Granary. Oh, yeah, Mary Kay used to work at the Granary. I think it's sold, though. Thank you, Rondi. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, I just don't, I don't know. You'd think I was going to the moon when I go over to San Jose. It's ridiculous. So um, if you do choose to come up to the Bay Area, I will say do not do it during um, rush hour. <laughs> no, unless you really like who you're sitting in the car with and want to be there for quite a while. So, okay, guys, have a great weekend, and I'll see you Monday, and we're back on deck with Katie Fowler with um, Principles of Design. We'll keep going. See ya. Bye-bye.